Today is a feast of circumcision. It's also, of course, the first day of the new year. And uh, a couple of several announcements. Uh, the action today's Mass, the epistle, is taken from uh, Christmas itself, and the preface is still the preface of, uh, preface of Christmas. Also, the epistle appointed for today's Mass is taken from the epistle of St. Paul to Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. Dearly beloved, the grace of God our Savior hath appeared to all men, instructing us that denying ungodliness and worldly desires, we should live soberly and justly and godly in this world, looking for the blessed hope and coming of the glory of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us <clears throat> that he might redeem us from all iniquity and might cleanse himself a people acceptable, a pursuer of good works. These things speak and exhort in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Gospel appointed for today's Mass is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 21. At that time, <clears throat> after eight days were accomplished that the child should be circumcised, his name was called Jesus, which was called by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. That's far the words of today's Holy Gospel. <clears throat> Our Savior hath appeared to all men, instructing us that denying ungodliness and worldly desires, we should live soberly, justly, and godly in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As we look over the past year and look into the new years, a couple of things come to mind. First off, we looked over the past year, and we could see where the world, if we just look at the world itself, and, and we look at the world, we see it's, it's like... Uh, it's so, so bad almost, I want to say. The world has become very pagan, uh, very atheistic. And in general, the people seem to have become uh, very lethargic uh, in trying to correct any evils. They have become in many ways complacent, uh, being content with where things are at. Uh, and... I wonder, sometimes wonder if that's if, if what we see in public life, we see uh, uh, not only in the world but in our own country, if that's a reflection of what we ourselves are. Uh, if we're complacent uh, where we're at, if we're uh, content with what we're doing, uh, lethargic in the spiritual order, then let's look to the future and let's do something about it. But on the other hand, we look to the past, we see all the graces that God has given us, that our Lord has been watching over us in one way or another, and we should thank him for all the graces we've received over the, over the past year. But looking to the new year, let's, uh, let's change things, because let's change what has been over the past year in the spiritual life, if you will. We should look to uh, correct the faults we have, to overcome the weaknesses that we may have fallen into. Because of weakness, we have fallen into various sins. And all the sins we've committed over the past year Go back and examine your conscience. And there, determine what it is you must do. It's easy enough to say, well, I'm going to not do this or I'm going to do that. Uh, particularly if there's some sin involved, say, I'm going to try to keep, uh, keep out of this sin or that particular sin. I'm going to not fall into this sin or that sin. Or I'm going to do some good work, whatever it might be. But if it is that trying to do some good work, uh, there's some hindrance in the way of this. Or in trying to keep away from some sin, there's something that keeps drawing you into it then we have to take some real steps. Real steps in order to avoid the sin, in order to do the good. Real steps may mean a number of things, uh, for one, one for one person, another for another person. Maybe it's uh, staying away from some particular place. Maybe it's avoiding this or that particular person. Maybe it's taking on some particular practice of one sort or another. Maybe we have to... Uh, uh, just take on uh, some discipline, whatever it might be. We have to discipline ourselves somehow or another. But if we don't do this, uh, as we look the, at the world, it's almost like it's degenerated. We become so complacent uh, that uh, the world does nothing. They're content. And uh, I, I just by way of example, let me just go back a little bit, by way of example. We look at what is going on in the world. We see all the evils being propagated uh, this, of one kind or another, the crimes being committed, and such that we, we see things now that, that uh, 50 or 60 or 70 years ago, people would have been shocked at it. But because we've become so accustomed, maybe that's what it is, we, became, we have become accustomed uh, to sin, accustomed to the sins of the world, 
And we've come to the point where, if not physically, we spiritually we just shrug our shoulders uh, and become content with what we see and not letting it bother. We become habituated to the, the ways of the world uh, and uh, we accept it as the norm. However, just always remember that sin is not the norm. It's not the standard. Uh, if it is that the world, uh, use, for example, using God's name in vain, whose, fe- whose feast day is tomorrow, the feast of the holy name, uh, they use God's name in vain. It's become so commonplace that you hear it, it's almost like it's like uh, asking for a piece of gum. It's like it just, uh, it's so easy, it's so, and we don't, it doesn't even offend us anymore. It doesn't even shock us anymore. Fifty years ago, it would have been a shock to hear someone use God's name in vain or the foul language that, that people use nowadays. Uh, it just it would, it wouldn't have been heard, not only in decent society, but you wouldn't have heard it coming out of a Catholic mouth at all, the, the, the language they use or the things they do. You would never have seen it or even heard of it. It would have been covered up. It would have been a, a shameful thing uh, to let anybody know that we have seen or done or spoken uh, about something that would be improper, unbecoming. And yet, in our own day and age, we've become so complacent, so complacent in these things, we think these things are normal. Just because the rest of the world does it, uh, we have come to the conclusion that, that it's just normal for us. But this new year now, let's change things. Uh, let's change the way we think. Let's change the way we conduct ourselves. Let's uh, change the way we speak. Whatever it might be, let's, like St. Paul would say, cast out the old leaven. Cast out the old leaven. And as we, as customary to make a New Year's resolution, let's make the New Year's resolution, whatever it might be. And then, along with the resolution, determine to pick some particular, some particular way to achieve that end. It's one thing to say that I'm going to make a pilgrimage to Rome once a month, but if you don't have the finance to do it, that's a resolution that can't be followed through with it. So when you resolve to perform some good work, to overcome some fault, to put behind you some sin, then likewise determine the means in order to achieve that end, whatever it might be, uh, and then uh, have the resolve to follow through with it. We can have the best of intentions, but if we do nothing about it, uh, it serves no good purpose. But with this new year now, we can start out with a clean slate. We can go to confession, uh, start out really with a clean slate spiritually in the soul, and then let's just follow through it and keep it in that position, keep it in that place. Uh, And uh, let's like make the new year something even better than the last year. If it is that we've become so complacent, so content, so uh, indifferent to uh, the spiritual order, uh, maybe, 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 actually, maybe the problem is that we, maybe we need a persecution. Because right now we see wars, we hear rumors of wars, we see all kinds of evils being propagated. And once again, we, we shrug our shoulders and we think that's normal. It's, just, it's a normal thing. Maybe we need something back as it did in the early ages or back during the, the, the Anglican Reformation or the Protestant Reformation. Or maybe during the, the French Revolution uh, where there's actual persecution where we had to stand up and live the faith and be willing to die. It was back in the 60s when I was a young man, a young teenager, I guess, at that point in time. Uh, the expression that came into being at that point in time, there's a number of people who says, well, it'd be rather red than dead, meaning rather than die, they'd rather just give in under communism. Well, today, it's almost an accepted fact we're in a socialistic order today. Uh, people have taken that saying back then and actually put it into practice. Maybe we need something to make us stand up for our faith. And maybe that's where persecution would be something good. Not that we'd want it, because when our Lord talked about the destruction of Jerusalem. He said that it would be a terrible thing. We pray it wouldn't be on a Sunday. Uh, it wouldn't be in the winter time. And he gave all these things. He says, pray that it doesn't happen. But when it does, know that time has come. Because I, I almost wonder if we did have a persecution. Would we stand up? Would we stand up and be counted, uh, and therefore be thrown into prison and thrown to lions or put to death one way or another? Would we do that, or would we give in and cave in and uh, go the right way of the rest of the world? Because remember, our Lord, uh, God Himself said in the Old Testament, He says, "Either either hot or cold, either hot or cold." And maybe a persecution would force us to be one way or another. 
that we would take a stand. Maybe we would take a stand and be put to death, or maybe we'd be like St. Paul and just stand by, they throw the rocks and the killing of St. Stephen. But, or maybe it's a good thing to do this year, maybe we should just uh, be like St. Paul when he's knocked off his horse. Uh, his prayer was, he says, Lord, that I may see. He says, Lord, that I may see. That we may really see the state of affairs as it is in our own soul. And maybe that's what we should do for this new year. Let it be that we would pr- pray to Almighty God that we would see what it is that we would see ourselves as God would see us, and that we'd see what we have to do to sanctify ourselves, to correct the evils that we've committed, the sins that we've committed, uh, and to turn away from them and lead a life of grace. So I, that would be a New Year's resolution, that we would pray to Almighty God daily, that we would ask him that we might be enlightened to see what it is he wants us to know concerning our spiritual life. And God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.